Well, thanks everybody for joining me tonight. Um, so tonight we're we're still in the middle of this sort of mini series where we're looking at how you build up real real world systems now with the, the products that we've looked at over the last few days, the last few uh, sessions that we've done. Uh, and today it's the twin zone, or more commonly known as the S plan. Everybody knows it as the S plan, but ultimately it's the system where you've got two port valves. So you can twin zone by definition. We're looking at two separate, two, two valves, two heating and hot water, but it's it's a system that's very much expandable in so much as you can add on as many valves as, as you like, as long as you've got time and temperature to control them. So I'll kick it off by uh, sh talking about our control packs. Now, if you haven't uh, seen these uh, already, let me show you these. So the, the system that we're going to uh, look at tonight is going to be based on this, the PBT66 control pack uh, which is got a, you can see it's got an lp241 rts1 so you've got you've got your programmer you've got time and temperature control for both sides of the system and you've got the 222 mil two ports now i'll just briefly show you um our uh, let me let me ditch all of this get rid of that what we don't need so i'll just briefly show you our the control packs on our website if you if you're unfamiliar with them um so We've, we've, we've categorized them and depending on what you're actually looking to do. So there's an unvented control pack. There's Biflow, which we'll look at next week, which is our Y-Plan system. Um, and you can see here that the twin zone control packs sit in here. And I've just arbitrarily picked tonight to, to have a look at the PBT-66. But there's, there's various ones in the range depending on what program you want and what size valves you're using. So it's probably the best way of buying our kit is to get it in a control pack because uh, you get everything you need to uh, to do the job. So let me bring you back to let me ditch that and I'll bring you back to to this this deck here. So the most important thing really in this in this pack is the LWC1 wiring center because it's it's our biggest wiring center and it's really the nicest one to use. So if you if you can always try and use the LWC1 it saves you a lot of headache particularly with a twin zone or an S-Plan system, because if you want to go to S-Plan Plus, where you start adding more motorized valves and more controls, that extra size does, does pay dividends. So I'll show you first really the, the process flow. This is not really how you wire it. This is more the process flow. So if you remember, it's your programmer is the head of the system. You've got two switches essentially in there, albeit that they're time controlled relays, but ultimately two switches, one for central heating, one for hot water. You've got another set of switches in your heat, your uh, temperature controls, your um, cylinder thermostat and your room stat. So the condition needs to be that both of those switches need to be made. So both devices need to be calling for heat in order for something to happen, which in this case is we drive the motorized valve open. So you can see from this view here, albeit that's not how we would wire them, that's really the flow. So it really illustrates the fact that if, if you've got a boiler that's say continually running all the time, it's not necessarily the, the, the time and temperature controls that are holding it on because they're not directly controlling the boiler. All they're doing is telling a valve to move. It's the, the valve, you remember that these are five wire valves, so they've got a common and they've got a switch live out of them. And it's when the cam hits the micro switch is what causes the boiler to fire to give an output. So there's no real direct connection between the time and temperature controls and the boiler. It's the valve that causes the boiler to fire. So we'll now look at really how we would we would wire this. Obviously, you don't wire them all together. You wire them all back to a wiring center like this. And you can see that that's the LWC uh, one that we've got there. You get the the sort of control wiring block along the top that's got the red links in it. That's really where you put all of your all of your lives will go in there, all of your different switch wires. And the vertical spine, the block that goes down the center, is designed to have your neutrals in your earth. So it keeps everything nice and tidy in that respect. And also another good thing with the LWC1 wiring center is on the reverse of the lid, you get this wiring diagram. It's not a traditional wiring diagram like what we just what you're used to, but it's really sort of wiring by numbers. So on this, you can see we've got the twin zone system and we've got the biflow system at the bottom. So you pick which one you're looking at. It tells you what links you need to put in. So you, you saw those red links. Now a lot of those are in already as it leaves the factory, 
but you do get a length of um, red wire that comes with it so that you can manufacture your own links depending on what it is that you want to do. So it tells you what links you need and it then tells you where you need to put what wires depending on what system it is that you're trying to wire. So we'll now go through and we'll build up the wiring diagram. So let's start with our links. And the reason I say that is if you don't put the links in at the beginning, you'll forget to do it at the end and then you end up spending a load of time trying to chase your, chasing your tail why the system's not working. So you can save yourself a lot of grief by get your links in first, and then you know that once those are all in, double check them, then you can just blast through and start wiring it up. So once your links are in, next thing I always do is give it a power supply. So from our uh, switch fuse for fuse at three amps normally, we bring power in and it, the, your, your voltage goes in, or your permanent supply, or your, your supply from the three amp fuse spur goes into the top block, and you'll see that on the demo in a minute, goes into the top block on the vertical spine. But you see it's got a red link there, which links it up to terminal 11. So terminal 11 on that top rail has got your permanent, has got a permanent supply on it, with, and you can do whatever you want with, with that. So next up, let's start with the head of the system, which is the programmer. So we then get our programmer in, and you can see that your neutral will come from the vertical terminal rail on the on the wiring center, and the live in to the programmer is that same live in that's connected to 11. So the programmer is the only one really that's got the exception where you pull the live from the, that, that vertical rail. You could get it from number 11, but it tends to get a bit messy, and all of our drawings tend to show you show it coming from that the top block on that vertical terminal rail. So once you've got those in, we're not using terminals one and two because they're the offs. We'll, we, we certainly will do next week when we look at the Y plans, but for a twin zone or an S plan system, we're only interested in the ons. So hot water on, terminal number three, uh, central heating on, terminal number four, and you can see those wire out to their to their respective terminals are on the on, on the wiring side on the on the horizontal rail. So once we've got the programmer in, and the, the process really here is backplate in, and then you've got your wires going into your wiring center. So you want to remember what color wires you use, or certainly label it. And that's another thing you get in the LWC1 wiring center, is you get the little labels. So you can actually, as the, as the, the five core or whatever you've got comes in, you can just put the label around it to, to, to identify it, to make your life a little bit easier. So once we've got the time control in, Let's start getting some temperature controls in. So the, the RTS-1 that we've got there, if you remember, it's a three-wire thermostat, so it's not volt-free, so you don't need to get a, a permanent supply to it to run it. It will take it off of the live that comes out, or the switch live that comes out of the programmer. So, and then terminal number three is your live back in, so that's your switch live out. So you can see we've now got two switches in series which feed back into the wiring center. Remember with the RTS one, you've got to have a neutral there. It is an electronic thermostat, so you've got to have a, you've got to tie it to neutral, which would be on your vertical rail, so that the, the device will actually run. So that takes care of central heating. We will then pop in a HTS three, which is our cylinder stat. Uh, now you'll notice with this, there is no there is no neutral on the cylinder stat. The, the HTS three is a bimetal thermostat, so it's just got the, the metal strip in there that bends depending on the temperature. Of the cylinder, we've got two. We've got two sets of contacts. Essentially, we've got a common in, and then we've got the normally open and the normally closed. Now, we for this, we're not interested in the satisfied side. We're only interested in the demand. But you can see from what we've got now, two two sets of switches in series that feed back in to the wiring center. So now we'll get some valves on the system, and you can see that the, the, the in this kit you get the ZA5. So it's a five wire valve sits on a 22 mil two port body you could e equally use the za6s if you're going for um, 28 mil you get the extra wire and i'll show you what you do with that in a minute but ultimately what we've led up to here is the outputs from both the time and temperature controls feed the brown wires on the valves and if you remember from that demo i did if you liven up the brown wire it causes the valve to move across so it moves from a to b on the actuator so all we're doing is we're driving the valve open. Once the valve is open, it hits that micro switch at the end, that end switch, and then that's what we'll, we will use to fire the boiler. So you can see the orange and the gray wires on the diagram. 
So the greys, you can see, are connected into Terminal 7, and that links across to, to 11. So that's bringing live onto one side of the switch, of that micro switch, that the cam hits when the valve has completed its travel. Now, you'll, nine times out of 10, you'll see that it's, it's connected to 230 volts. Doesn't have to be, it's volt free. So if you didn't want to switch live out of the valve, you could put 24 volts in on 11. So obviously you wouldn't link it to live, you'd bring your 24 volts in, and then what goes on to the gray will come out on the orange once that end switch is made. And the very last thing we'll do then is we'll add in our devices. Now, I will, I'll block this in a little box there. We'll block it, but there is a boiler and pump there, and you can see those come out of 12 and 13, which ultimately link back to terminal number six, which is where your oranges are. So your live comes in onto seven, livens up the gray. As soon as either valve is made, oranges go live, and that will come out onto 12 and 13. So that's really... The, the, the wiring diagram for the system that we're going to use. For completeness, I'll show you what it looks like if you were using a ZA6, where you've got this extra white wire. And remember, the white wire goes live when the valve is in the closed position. So it's the opposite to the orange. Um, but you can see here, they're just, they're just made safe by going into dead terminals. So we've got three dead terminals. We've got one, five, and 16. That's where you would put your, uh, your white wires if you were using the ZA6 if this was a 28 mil system. So that's really the theory of what we're gonna do. Now let's put it into practice. So again, I've got a, a few, a, a, a bit of a sequence here that shows us how we actually do this in practice. If I can just share that with you. And I'll make myself small so you get the best view. So again, we're working off of a training board and you can see here, we've got the back plates in, um, with the wires going to them. So we're sort of at the second fixed stage. All of the wiring is being pulled in for the devices. We're now going to go around and fit all of the, the devices on the end. Now, for this system here, I've dropped all of the all of the accessories, so the timers, programmers, uh, the programmer and the room stat and the cylinder stat have all been fed with five core. And I'll show you why I did that uh, in a moment. But obviously the first thing we have to do before we do any of this is make sure that we're working safe. Let's safely isolate it, pop the fuse out, or even better, if you can isolate at the fuse board, I would certainly do so if you've got everything in bits like this. So first shot here is the, the, the back plate for the programmer. You can see we've got the five cores coming in there. And the reason I'm use, do, do, you doing that is I, I'm never going to be using the earth as a switch wire. And this is what we, this is what we mustn't do just because we've got the earth wire there. It needs, it, if it's there, we use it for earth. If it's not there, obviously you can't use it, but never use your earth wire as a switch wire. So here we've got a five core coming in. We know it's a class two item, so it doesn't need to be earth, but the earth will go to the earth post. We've got the blue and the brown, which is our permanent supply in. And then we've got our two switch wires, the, the black and the, and the gray, appropriately indicated. You see they've got the little brown flags on there to indicate that they are carrying, they will go live under certain circumstances. Um, it's really up to us which ones we use for whatever, for, but as it happens, I'm going to use black for hot water and I'm going to use gray for the central heating. But that's co completely up to you as long as you indicate them properly and you remember at the wiring center end to make sure that you wire it into the appropriate uh, temperature control. So let's move it along a bit and you'll see now the back plate for the RTS-1. We've got some terminals missing there. If, that, if this was an SCR back plate for a wireless receiver, or if this was a, if we, if we were putting, say, an RTS-4, which is a bolt-free uh, room stat, we'd have the full complement of terminals there. But really simple wiring on this. Again, I've run five core, because if you run a three core to it, you're going to be using that earth wire as a switch line, which obviously is a no-no. So even though we're not using the gray, the gray is just snipped back, and the whole assembly there, the whole cable assembly has got a sleeve over it. We're just going to use the black in this case. The gray is surplus. So we've just we've just trimmed it back, and again it will be trimmed back at the the wiring center wiring center end. But blue and brown will be blue will be our permanent neutral. The brown here will be the switch output from the from the central heating side of the programmer, and the black will be our switch line that goes back to feed the volume. And the last one we'll look at is the uh, cylinder thermostat. So again, there's no neutral here, so you could. By all means, if you wanted to run a three core to this, you could do, because you wouldn't be using the earth and you'd be using the blue. But as I, as everything else is running five core, I've used five core. 
And as you'll see next week, it's a good practice to get into doing because if you run five to quarter your cylinder stat, if you when you do a biflow system where you need to use the satisfied, you've always got the necessary cores there to do that. So now with those in place, they all run back to the wiring center, and you can see I've I've already put the, the neutrals and the earths in. So the very top terminal there, that brown that you can see going into the top terminal, that's the live in from the switch view spur. That's got the link that goes up to terminal 11. You can just see the red link there. But all the rest of the terminals, the, the first three, or as, as we move down, are the neutrals. And they've got little wire links that, that sit in the back there. So that whole bank is common together. And then you've got the, the earths there. Again, the, those bottom three are all common together for your earths. So next, we'll start wiring the accessories. Actually, we won't. I'll, I'll just show you this. You can see everything at the moment is back entry, so it's all coming through the knockouts at the back. On the OWC one, you've also got the the knockouts on the on the bottom on the bottom. So if you want to bring cables in surface mount, which you normally would do for your valves, I mean, admittedly that they are they are they, they do go into a void here into, into the back of the training board, but normally you will just have them running loose, and you'll want to take those in as a surface mount. And we supply you with the little straps that go across, little cable grips that go across those to uh, screw receivers there so that you can secure if you bring anything in surface mount but everything here is back fed so now we'll move on and we'll have a look I, I, I mentioned previously about the little labels you get with the lwc1 and that's what i've done here so as each five core comes through the back i've just put the flag on there to indicate what it is just to make my life a little bit easier uh, in future but, you know, you, you can buy just a, a, a Patras box with a blanking plate over the, over the top and use that as a wiring centre. But these are the little sort of things that just make your life a little bit easier if you if you use a, a proper uh, purpose-built wiring centre. So with all those cables pulled in, we can then start uh, terminating. There's just another view, really, of the, the, the labelling. And there it is with the links. First thing we do is we get the links in. So I'm basing the links here off of what I'm seeing on the top row there for the twin zone system. So like I said, if you, do, if you don't do it to start with, you'll invariably forget to put the links in, and then you'll be doing a little fault finding at the end trying to understand why things aren't working. So get the links in first thing. Once those are in, you can then start doing the other devices. There's just a closer view of the links that go up to, to get the power up onto that top rail, and there's just really a closer view of the, the central um, terminal rail that's doing your your earths and your um, your neutrals and if you do get anything else that you need a permanent live for you can go on to the other side of that top terminal so if you want to, if you've got a permanent live for your boiler so you, you can run it from that so there's plenty of room in this wiring center for all the different things that you're going to need so here now i've just wired the programmer backplate and you can see i've gone for for black on the terminal three, the, the hot water, and gray for the central heating. So wire the back plate, and now I wire it into the wiring center. And based on the labeling that I put on there, I know where everything is. All I've got to remember here is that I used the black for the hot water and the gray for the central heating. So first thing is getting the getting the supply in. You saw that that brown went in. That's the supply to the programmer. Black goes into ten for the uh, hot water and the gray that we're using is your feeding on feed in on number nine for the central heating. So now onto the room stat. There's the room stat wired, and again I've indicated the black wire with the little brown flag to make sure that we know that it, it, it does go live, the, the, the correct way to do that. And again, based on the labeling that I've done there, I can now go ahead and wire. The, the room stat, so that's the common into the room stat on number three. And then number two is the live out, which will eventually go to the valve. And then exactly the same principle for the cylinder stat, just the two wires here that are wired in, the common and the demand. And I'm all, the, I'm, all I'm doing here is remembering the wire colors, where the wires go, I'm looking at the lid of the LWC1. So I know that the common for the, Cylinders that goes into 15, which is the, the, the brown there, and then the black, which is the return, will go into terminal number 14. 
And because we've put the links in, we don't need to be really worried about tracing out where they go. We will do it as just a matter of course, but we, if we get the links in first, we know that everything is where it should be. So now onto the valves. So we've got the, we've got the time and temperature controls in. We'll now look at the valves. With the valves, I'd always put your browns in first because if you start merging the, 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 the oranges and grays together, you're then trying to pick back through, seeing which one's which. So process the browns because those are the ones that aren't common to anything. So first brown that I've got here is for the hot water, and that goes into terminal eight, terminal eight. And the second brown is for the central heating valve, and that will go into terminal number four. So once we've got those in the correct place, we will then look at merging together the oranges and the greys because we know that both of those go together. And if you were doing an S Plan Plus system, you go in and you put all your browns into their respective terminals. You can see here I'm just tracing out so I can see that the power that comes out of the programmer goes into the common of the room stat, comes back on the room stat through the link onto terminal four, and that will liven up, liven up the central heating valve. And similarly, um, the same for the, the, the hot water. If, however, I was doing do, uh, wiring wiser here, I'd still, I'd still follow the same wiring diagram, but instead of having the wired room thermostat, I would just put the red link. You probably just saw the red link there that I would just put across two and three. So what we want to do is if even if we're fitting controls that don't have a wired room thermostat, rather than moving wires around so that it departs from what the wiring diagram tells us on the lid, we just put a, a link in to indicate that the, the room stat has been linked out. And again, I'm just going to do exactly the same now for the hot water. So the programmer is powered. When the programmer goes live, it comes in on the black for the, the hot water. That links over to terminal number 15, which is the common of your room stat. It was that uh, common cylinder stat, sorry, back from the cylinder stat on 14 and out to the brown wire of the, the hot water valve. So you can see we've got two separate systems here. If either one calls for heat, that's what will fire the boiler by our, by our next move, which is where we merge the greys and the oranges together. So I'm just doing the greys here, followed by the oranges. Now, the, the greys are going to go into terminal number seven, and you can probably see that terminal seven has got the link that goes over to 11. So we bring the, we bring the live supply up on to 11. That links over to seven, which lines up the greys. And then when either cam of either of the motorized valves is made, that's going to send the voltage out on orange, which will go out and fire our boiler. And the la very last thing that I'm going to put in here is the, the live out to the boiler. So it's going to be the that's going to go in on any of those common out, which are 12 or 13. So you can see orange links to 12, 12 links to 13. So boiler will go in, boiler switch live, I should say, will go in on 12. And if you've got a, a secondary pump that you want to run, that can go in on 13. So you're not having to merge too many wires together here. Every wire for whatever function has got its, it's, got its own place. So once we've done that, that's really the wiring done. So we can go now and fit the accessories to the back plate. So the LP241 goes on, the cover goes on the, the uh, HTS3, the cylinder stat. And again, the room stat, that the keen eyed amongst you will see that that isn't an RTS1. That's actually an RTS2. It's got the little red indicator in the top right. Um, so it, this isn't, strictly speaking, the, that control pack that we were looking at, but the principal holds. And obviously, when you put the lid on the wiring center, just make sure you don't trap anything. That's a favorite that I've seen on a lot of installations that people will trap the uh, trap wires and, and they'll, you know, they'll, they'll damage the wires there. And then once we're at that stage, we can re-energize. Once we're happy that everything's safe and all the covers are on, re-energize. And the last bit is really the testing procedure. So the test that I like to tend to do here, uh, and this this is really the video will document this, start with either channel. You're calling at the, the cylinder stat, and what we're looking now is for the hot water valve to be motoring over. And you can see it's making its way over from A to B. As soon as it gets to B, the mic the boiler. We do seem to have frozen here. Um, certainly frozen on the, the video end here. Don't know if it's like at your end, but uh, you can we we'll see what's going on here with that. We'll just try and 
So there you can see the boiler is running. And now if we drop either one of these out, so I'll start with, with, the, with the temperature control. So if we drop the cylinder stack down so that we stop the call for heat, you can see the valve starts to close and that releases the micro switch boiler stops. And similarly, if we're calling for heat again, so cylinder stack kicks back in, the valve starts to move over from A to B. And when it's completed its travel, boiler kicks in. And similarly, if we if we kill it at the programmer end, that should also cause the valve to close. So there we've got two switches in series. The condition needs to be, both of them need to be calling for heat in order for the valve to move and consequently the boiler to fire. Exactly the same principle with the uh, central heating side. So call for central heating on the programmer, turn the room start up, and you'll see that the central heating valve this time starts to move over. As soon as it's completed its travel, boiler starts, boiler kicks in because that micro switch is made. We drop the room stat down, it goes back from A to B, and the boiler stops. Call for heat again, we'll see the valve starts to move over. And when it's completed its travel, we'll get the signal to kick the boiler in. And then the final check is to knock it off at the programmer. And that should also cause the valve to close, it goes from B to A, and the boiler stops firing. So that's really, in a nutshell, um, how you would install uh, uh, um, um, a, a twin zone system uh, and the test that I normally go through at the end. But I'm not, uh, you've all obviously wired stuff in the past. I'm not trying to you know, teach you how to wire stuff. I'm really just trying to make the process flow as easy as possible for you. So like I say, if you get the links in first, you're not chasing your tail at the at the end when things aren't working. But also if you go through that, that test that I did do in that process, Process. So go through each one individually, understand what it is that you're trying to achieve, and then as long as all the tests check out, you're good to go. So that's really it. That's that's the demo and, and the theory side done. I'll just have a quick look here and see if there are any questions that I need to uh, have a look at. Let me just uh, have a look and see if there's anything that I need to answer. If you've got any questions, as always, just stick them in the comments. Obviously, any that come in now, I'll deal with. I see Elliot's gone back on a couple here, so I don't need to by the looks of it. Uh, so uh, just one about the, the booklet. Um, I think we are reprinting the installer booklet um, with some changes that we've done. But uh, if you can get hold of the store, installer handbook, that will, that will have all the wiring diagrams in the back. But again, website is also a really good resource for this. If you go to the installer zone, on our website, all of the wiring diagrams are there. Um, and also you'll be able to use this video as a resource. So if there's anything that, I appreciate it, to do it in half an hour is quite quick, um, but it, it's gonna be there as a resource for you. So if you need anything, you can go back and, and view it uh, after. So again, the, the comments will be monitored on this. So if, there's, if you do rewatch it and anything comes to mind that you wanna ask about, just stick it in the comments and we'll, we'll come back to you. So that's really it. Uh, I don't see that there's anything else there that needs my attention. Um, so uh, I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Like I say, next week we will be looking at the BiFlow or the Y plan system, which is a little bit more complex because obviously we're using the hot water off side of it as well. And that's one that when we get onto the fault finding in a couple of weeks, that's one that we can really have some fun with uh, the other thing is if you've got any ideas or anything you'd like to see um obviously i'm sort of doing these, these different series based on our product ranges but if there's anything that you particularly want to see uh covered in the training um again stick it in the comments and um we'll, we'll do our best to 